And now uh, here we have uh, the new vertex and its neighborhood is a clique. That clique may be a maximal clique by itself. In that case, just the neighborhood n of v, if you take v, the so called n of v, the set of neighbors of v will be a maximal clique somewhere here, right? So, somewhere it will be, maybe this one, right? Now, what we can do? We can add v to this because that will only, that is the new maximal clique, it is a bigger maximal clique because if v was like this and this was a maximal clique nothing more can be added to it from the other part, the already seen part, but this can be added no? because this word vertex is adjacent to all of them, right. So, that means we can be added to that, but it is possible that this n of e may be part of a clique, may be only this much, that is possible no? sometimes. That means if I add v to it, this is not even a clique, right, because v will not be adjacent to this part, but uh, v is adjacent to these parts. So, therefore, what you should do? You should collect this portion so and then attach something here. So, not that you remove it from there, it will be there, right? It will be there also, but uh, this part will go to here and V also will be there. We will get a maximal click like that because V is, v is, so v is adjacent to all these things. Nothing else can be added to that because that is a maximal click because V is not adjacent to anything more, right? That is the only thing. So, therefore, uh, v guarantees that the new thing you have created is a maximal clique. So, you have not destroyed anything which uh, you have uh, created till now, but just that you have added one more maximal clique, but connected it to this where you de you detached, uh, you collected a few vertices now, uh, to that would not be connected. Now, the other property is also satisfied, can you see that? Namely, uh, the uh, if you take a vertex any vertex say u still those maximal cliques in which u was appearing is still connected because if it is already if it is that part is only uh, in the earlier part of the tree then there is nothing we have changed right but only problem is suppose uh, it was that u is part of these vertices which with which we created the new back now, no problem because u is anyway here, it is it was connected in the earlier part and it is also connected to this. v as such is appearing in only one bag now, so therefore it is by trivially a connected part, right. So, I hope you are following what I am telling. So, what I am trying to do I can see you in the for the caudal graph, I am making a tree of maximal cliques, it is not a tree, it is a conceptual tree because each tree node will correspond to a bag of vertices, such a set of vertices which essentially forms maximal cliques of the coral graph. And uh, my claim is that this tree can be formed with the extra property that if you look at a single vertex and identify the bags in which it is part of, it will be part of many bags because we are not um, saying that uh, uh, each bag is disjoint or something. A single vertex can go in many different bags. Uh, and then uh, these bags should form a connected part of the tree that we are making, right. And I have uh, given you a very simple construction for this thing. Just that uh, keep uh, looking at the order of uh, the perfect elimination ordering in the reverse order and then keep adding it, right. And then uh, uh, when a new vertex appears, look at its neighborhood. If its neighborhood itself was forming a full bag, then just add this vertex to that because that is fine. It but actually the maximal clique is should contain this also, right. If it was only part of the bag, then part that part of the vertices uh, that n of v along together with this new vertex forms a new bag. Does not mean that the earlier bag is destroyed or something, earlier bag remains as such, but we created a new bag and connected to uh, where it should connect to, where it came from, that is it. Uh, so, so, this is the, construction in which we, we so this, this way we can construct something. So, the details of this thing I am not uh, worrying too much about the 
this thing. So, then uh, so we essentially following this algorithm we get uh, uh, such a tree. So, you know this corresponds to the so called uh, tree decompositions. Why tree decomposition? Uh, so, tree decomposition uh, needs um, the following properties namely each vertex. So, this tree decomposition is not only for caudal graphs, it is defined for all graphs. So, each vertex V should be part of a bag, right. That means, uh, we cannot uh, discard any vertex, it should be part of at least one. So, if in this construction we are adding each vertex in at least one bag, right. And each edge U V should uh, be in some bag together, u and v together should appear in some bag. Simultaneously u and v should appear in one bag. So, in this construction also we are making sure we, out of u and v whichever is the lower numbered vertex when that is being considered its neighbor in, in the neighborhood of it it will be there right, in the neighborhood of it u uh, and v will be there. So, the third property is what we were telling namely if you take any vertex u and look at the the bags in which u is part of. So, this bar this uh, should form a connected subtree. This is the so called continuity that means, uh, if u is there in a particular bag and we uh, u is there in another bag. So, the path in the tree right uh, there is a tree there is a path to go from this bag to that bag now and all the bags in that path should contain u right that is you cannot abruptly disconnect it right. So, so our uh, uh, the tree we constructed here for Gordel graphs uh, correspond to a tree decomposition that way because these properties are, but then when we do it for Gordel graphs uh, there is an extra property. What is the extra property we are getting? the bags are maximal cliques, but in usual graphs it may not happen. Usual graphs bags may be uh, there not, may not be any structure in the bag. If you look at the uh, bag uh, yeah that may be just a collection of vertices. When you construct a tree decomposition there are various ways of constructing a tree decomposition. In fact, you can uh, put all vertices in the same bag and say ok this is a one node tree and this is a tree decomposition that is also valid because all these condition will be trivially met that is a useless tree decomposition. Usually uh, when we construct uh, a tree decomposition our concern will be to minimize something what will we try to minimize? We are concerned about the bag sizes look at each bag we create it and look at the biggest bag among them. And uh, we want to make sure that the biggest of the bag is minimized. So, you do not want any bag to be too big. So, that means uh, the maximum bag, the, the biggest bag, so we should keep as small as possible, right. So, if you keep the biggest bag as small as others, also will be naturally be small, right, because others are at least smaller than them, right. So, it is not necessary that all the bags are very small, but one bag is too big that we do not want. We want. Uh, like the worst case to be uh, <coughs> controlled, right. So, in this case we know in the tree uh, um, in the 
caudal graph case we know that this is the maximal click so the maximum click will be a maximal click that maximum click will become one of the bag that will be the biggest bag the way we have constructed right and uh, it is easy to like from this definition if you struggle a little bit you can show that you cannot go below this thing the when you try to make a 3 decomposition one of the bags so because the cliques should go anyway in one uh, bag together there is no uh, there should be a bag containing a full clique so therefore uh, one bag uh, should be as big as the maximum clique right so in the caudal graph case we are getting this good tree decomposer optimal uh, way of uh, uh, decomposing right uh, now let us see the once you know that for given a caudal graph so this nice tree can be uh, nice tree decomposition can be obtained now from this thing i'll show you how to get the intersection representation for the given caudal graphs. What I have done is I have taken a caudal graph, construct this tree decom constructed this tree decomposition where each bag is essentially a maximum click right and all the properties of the tree decomposition is valid. Now my point is uh, this conceptual tree so you can uh, forget that the each bag is a actually a contains a lot of words but think of it as a tree each bag in your mind should only look like one single vertex for something I mean that vertex does not correspond to the vertexes of the caudal graph you are dealing with right because essentially that uh, that is a bag right that is a bag of vertices from the original. So this conceptual trees uh, sub trees we can define corresponding to each vertex how will you do that take a vertex of the caudal graph so the of my caudal graph G so I will say V comma V comma E this is the given caudal graph. So for this thing I have this conceptual tree I have defined. So now take any u element of this v here and then in this tree remember each vertex here in this tree is a bag. Now look for all those bags in which u is part of say b i 1 uh, u is element of b i 2. So u element of b uh, I 3 and then U element of B I K suppose some K bags I identified in which U is part of. Now see the induced tree on those vertices those ba vertices corresponding to those bags alone. We know that by definition of the tree decomposition the way we have constructed that should be a tree structure connected structure right. So that is the sub that is the sub tree corresponding to uh, u so I can call it tu or something t it is a, a sub tree of t right and like that for each vertex here a vertex of the caudal graph we can construct a sub tree in the conceptual tree we created. Now if I claim that uh, if I make the intersection graph of these sub trees I will get back this caudal graph will you agree with me. So, to remember we have we are given a caudal graph G and from that caudal graph I constructed a conceptual tree where this conceptual tree is each vertex correspond to a bag of vertices of the original caudal graph and it satisfies so many so many properties right namely each bag induces a clique a maximum clique, maximal clique of the G and uh, there is this connectivity property and all those things. Now I am claiming that see look the given graph caudal graph G is essentially an induced an intersection graph an intersection graph of some subtrees of this conceptual tree subtrees of this conceptual tree which subtrees. So we have to make a list of subtrees the tree the universe is uh, based on this tree the from this thing I will make all many subtrees of this tree uh, one subtree corresponding to each vertex of the caudal graph right. So T u right for u element of v of g how am I making the T u subtree I am just collecting the bags in which u is part of and in the conceptual tree each bag is a node now right 
So, the, that forms a connected structure there. That connected structure, that connected subtree is this tree u say that I will associated with the u and for each vertex I got. So, how many for if there were n vertices in the codal graph I get n such subtrees right. Some of them may be intersecting, some of them may not be intersecting right. Now, my claim is that uh, keep your original graph where you started somewhere for reference, but now look at only the subtrees you have created and make the in intersection intersection graph of these subtrees just for checking whether there is something in that or not. Yeah, we will get back the graph is what I am saying, right. Why is why do we get back the graph? But uh, we have to do two things, take two vertices u and v of the original graph. The corresponding to that now we have T u and T v. Now we have to show that if u and v had an edge then T u and T v intersect. If u and v did not have an edge and T u and T v will not intersect. This we have to show. So, if u and v had an edge then we know that there is a maximal clique containing both of them together right because that is also the property of the tree decomposition. There is some uh, bag in which both of them are con coming together and then therefore, uh, that is a maximal clique. So, there should be an edge so that, that edge right and then uh, T u and T v should intersect because that vertex at least where u and v came together is part of both T u and both T v right. So, there is an intersection between T u and T v. On the other hand, if u and v did not have an edge between them, they cannot come together in any vertex, why? Any bag, because if they came together in the same bag, that is a bag maximal clique, in the maximal clique u and v came together, that means there was an edge between them, which contradicts the assumption that u and v were non-adjacent, agreed. So, uh, this is somehow it, uh, somehow this co construction correspond to uh, the original graph, we get back the original graph, right. What I have done is given any caudal graph, so I have shown you a tree which we made by an abstract consideration of bags and all and some subtrees of that tree such that uh, intersection uh, graph I make out of the subtrees will correspond to the original graph. Right. So, for uh, any caudal graph you have this structure, right. So, therefore, caudal graphs happens to be the subtrees of some trees, right. So, now if you want to show that if C4 cannot uh, be represented as the subtrees of a tree, just try doing that, it will it just intuitively you can understand that, right. Suppose you if you have a tree for you and then V is adjacent they should intersect with these things go somewhere else the third one intersects, but then how will you make it the third one intersect back with the first one without intersecting the middle one right. So, that, that if you imagine a little bit on the tree you will see that no that is not possible because it is approximately like that interval graph argument. Uh, this is tree there will be lot of things, but still you know that there is only uh, if you want to come back to the original then you have to hit the middle right. So, so, what I have done the, so the I, I was telling that caudal graphs also is an intersection graph representation. Now, again coming back to the uh, intersection graphs, yeah coming back to the intersection graphs. So, we started from the interval graph, interval graph is usually a starting point for many things. The caudal graphs, subgraph is interval graphs, uh, many other class of graphs are defined from interval graphs. So, one uh, I can tell uh, some examples, one is if you want to generalize. Now, interval graphs are like on the real line I take intervals right. So, this is real line you take intervals and say the intersection graph of intervals is on the real line is the interval graph. Now, why real line maybe we can go to a circle like this now say ellipse, but if I draw better it will become this right. So, then you see intervals can be on this thing say arcs right on this uh, on the circumference of this uh, yeah. So, many intervals can be defined on this right. Does it make a structural change? So, is it the same as the interval graph from the real line is now I take make both ends meet. This is called a circular arc graph circular arc graph intersection graphs of 
arcs uh, on a circle, right? Intervals on the circumference of an arc. This is structurally very different from actually, though it looks similar. That's so for it's not even a perfect graph. It's not. It's not a caudal graph because you can see that very easily you can make a C4 here, see like this right, C4 came right, but in interval graph that was not possible and not only C4 you can make C5 also same way. So, which means that it is not even a perfect graph. So, now just by making the real line like a circle right and considering the same thing here. Uh, you lost all the structure which we had the nice structure we had on for interval graphs we lost it is not even a perfect graph now. And uh, not all interval graphs are still circular R graphs, but there are only subclasses of circular R graphs, but the minute they try overlapping through the other side we have lot more complication right. So, this is a class of graphs where uh, uh, it is considerably more difficult to do things ok. So, I do not want to get too much into the circular graph, but uh, wherever you try to do a th something in the interval graph you can see whether you can extend it to circular R graphs. It is much more clumsier to work in those things because so now intervals keep interacting from both sides right you have to keep track of both that and uh, that is going up. There is some way of considering subgraphs of interval graphs also. The most natural thing is to put uh, some restriction on the interval graphs. For instance, you can tell that all intervals are of same length, very neat right. You do not allow things like one like this and all. So, everything should be of the same length. Then we will say they are unit interval graphs that is because we are assuming that they are unit length, uh, unit length or the, the e as long as it is equal length it is the same thing structurally there is no difference right unit interval graphs. You can see that in a unit interval graph uh, not even uh, this thing see is a unit interval graph. Can you show that? See we saw that a star was an interval graph earlier, no? but once we say once we insist that all length should be equal, then uh, even this cannot be represented this uh, 3 it is called a claw. Why? Because if you put the central vertex here you have only 2 end points now you can put one here, one here and the third one should be put in such a way that it is not it does not touch this or this right that means you can only put it like that it will become a become smaller than uh, the length right because you know all have to be of equal length if you that means it will always touch uh, this end point or this pen end point that means three things cannot be put, put the pigeonhole principle right three if you put three of them uh, at least two of them should uh, be either in the left end point or in the left point. That means, they will intersect each other, but the here we have an independent set these edges are not there right. So, that means, uh, that that restricts the interval graphs quite a lot. You can actually show that if uh, this interval graphs which does not have clue are exactly the uh, unit interval graphs. So, we will do it in the next class whatever right. This is